This video is not just a review, it's also a DIY project, so please stay tuned for that. Here is the Arillic Up to Stream Plate Amp. This was sent to me for free by the manufacturer, that's why I am marking this video as an advertisement. However, in this video I am going to say and do whatever I want. So, what is this? Well, as I turn it around, you can clearly see this is not a finished product. This is part of Rillick's line of DIY products. And this is a Class D stereo amplifier that puts out 40 watts per channel into 4 ohms and 20 watts per channel into 8 ohms. It also has a line-level subwoofer output with a fixed 300 Hz crossover frequency. It has a line-level input. It has a USB connection to connect to a computer where this device will show up as an external sound card. It has Bluetooth 5.0 music streaming. But the main point are the network functions via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. You can stream music directly from your mobile device. You can stream music from a network share, such as a computer or a NAS. You can connect to online streaming services, such as Spotify. You can listen to internet radio stations. And you can sync multiple Arillic products to get a multi-room audio system. We will do that in this video later on. The system is controlled by Arillic's 4Stream app, which we'll also take a look at later. And since this is a DIY product, let's also take a look around the back. So you can see on the bottom we have the built-in power supply that's a nice feature. We have the main board with the Class D stereo amplifier. And this was designed in January of 2021. And we also have this daughter board, which handles all the network functions. Now, you can tell by how this looks, this is meant to mount directly into the back of a speaker. And so we have this plastic here to insulate and seal off all the openings in the back. Now, the plastic is glued in, so I can't disassemble this any further to show you what's on the back of the main board. Here is what comes in the box. Of course, there is the plate amp itself, power cable, USB cable, this cable with a plug on one end. This is to make the internal connection from the plate amp to the speaker that it is mounted into. External antennas for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and some sticky foam strips to create a seal around the plate amp. And, of course, there is also an instruction manual, which is quite helpful because it also explains how to make use of some of the internal headers on the main board. For example, if you connect this simple little circuit, you get a whole array of control buttons. And around here are some specifications. Now, let's be very clear. Of course, you don't want to cut holes into any great high-end speakers. So, what I have right here is, I think, a pretty good compromise. These are some sealed two-way systems. They are quite heavy, so the enclosures should be pretty good quality. These are definitely a step above your typical bookshelf stereo system speaker. But they were made by LTUX. They were definitely built to a budget. 
I already had them open once to add some damping material, because originally there was none, and I only paid about 5 euro for these in a second-hand store. So these should be perfect for our DIY project. I took out one of the connection terminals, and as you can see, there already is quite a large hole in the back, which I can just extend for the plate amp. There is one slight challenge, as you can see, there is a frequency crossover consisting of a resistor and a capacitor in series with the tweeter, and these components are glued to this terminal assembly, so I will have to carefully move them somewhere else. It is quite some time later now, and here is my first suggestion for an improvement. Include a template with the cutout and the screw holes that you need. The only dimensions given in the manual are these, and those are the outer dimensions of the whole plate. So that just isn't very helpful. So it took a lot of careful measuring to come up with this design. This has an upper section, which should fit around the main board, and a wider lower section, which should fit around the power supply, which is a bit wider than the main board. So that is the drawing, and there it is transferred onto the speaker. You can hopefully see those lines. So it is now time to have some fun with the jigsaw. And that's the cutout done. I only had to make one adjustment to my plan, and that is rounding off this corner. But now the plate amp fits perfectly. I also pre-drilled the screw holes, and as you can see, the ones down here end up quite close to the cutout, and that's the reason why I went with this funny shape rather than just a simple rectangle. I finished modifying the wiring of the speaker, and yes, the cables are all way too long, but I'm not sure how exactly this is all going to come together, and this is certainly better than ending up with cables that are too short. So, the plate amp connects to the plug over here, and that goes straight through to the woofer over here. And in parallel to that is the series circuit consisting of the frequency crossover with the capacitor and resistor, and the tweeter, which connects up here. The capacitor is actually a proper bipolar type, which is surprising. I took the chance and tested it, and it is okay. And there is the crossover safely hot glued into the speaker, where it won't get into the way of anything. And now it is finally time to install the plate amp into the speaker. I have applied the foam seal all around the plate, so I can now go and drop this in and, while doing so, connect the speaker. Unfortunately, this cable is not quite as long as I would like it to be, so I'll have to do this while dropping the plate amp into the hole, like so. Okay, that is the internal speakers connected right there. Make sure that is nicely seated, like so. And then I can continue to drop this in. Now, there are some cables for the antennas, and yep, this one was already getting ready to get caught up, so we'll have to make sure. Okay, well, that, that went surprisingly fast at the end. 
plate amp is now in place and I can go and install the screws. Now you can see there are countersunk screw holes provided, but the countersinks are too small. You can find screws that fit into there and are flush with the plate, but those are so small that they very likely won't be able to safely hold this into a piece of wood. Now there is going to be one slight complication and that is finding the screw holes that I pre-drilled because the holes are covered up with the foam gasket as well. But there is the first screw. Right, that's all six screws installed. So let's go and tighten these down real well. Right, and that's it. The plate amp has been installed in the speaker. And here is what the plate amp looks like inside of the speaker. And up there are the antenna cables that I mentioned that you have to be a bit careful with. I reinstalled the damping material that I had added before. I had to cut it into a lower section and an upper section, but the total amount remains the same. Of course, you don't want to cover up the plate amp with the damping material and insulate the heat sinks of the power supply. That would not be good. So make sure that remains in free air. I have the cables secured together right there. So now all that's left to do is reinstall the woofer. And there it is, the completed speaker with the plate amp on the back. On a sealed speaker system, you can always test how good the seal actually is by carefully pushing in the cone of the woofer. It should return back out with a little bit of a delay, as you can see, on the unmodified speaker. If I do the same test on the speaker that I installed the plate amp into, I would say the delay is not quite as long. So unfortunately, the plate amp is not quite perfectly sealed. And so I would recommend that you install this into a ported speaker, such as a bass reflex speaker, where the seal does not have to be perfect. I now have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas screwed on, and the left channel speaker is connected right there. For this demonstration, the plate amp is facing the camera so that we can observe the status LED. The interface on the plate amp is quite simple. There is a rotary encoder volume control with a multifunction push button. You press it once to change the input mode, press it twice to reset the Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection, and you press and hold the button to put the plate amp into standby and to wake it up again. The status LED below lights up white for Wi-Fi mode and flashes when it's waiting for a connection. It lights up blue for Bluetooth mode and flashes when it's waiting for a connection. It lights up green for the analog aux input mode and yellow for the USB connection mode. And now we finally get to the exciting part I have a Relix 4Stream app ready to go on the phone. So let's power up the plate amp and see what happens. And there is the first sign of life. 
It's still flashing. It's flashing fast. I think that means it's booting up. And did you hear that? That was the first bit of sound from our modified Enter speaker. Enter setup mode. Follow the instructions in the app to finish the setup. Okay, so as you can hear, we get instructions. So we go over into the device tab on the app and click the plus to add a new device. Yes, it asks down here. It is unfortunately this weird mishmash of English and German in this app. But it says down here the indicator is flashing, which indeed it is. So it's now searching and it already found it. So we set up the device. Now, for this to work, you have to give the Forstream app the permission to access the GPS connection. But you can revoke that permission once you're done setting up your devices. So, it now wants to set up Wi-Fi for the device, and it has already entered my home network, which it already knows about because I already have the A30 Plus streaming amplifier set up in here. So we press continue and it's now connecting. Connected to your Wi-Fi network. And there it is. It says it's connected to the Wi-Fi network. And there it is. The app confirms we are connected to the Wi-Fi. Signal strength is 68%. Okay. And if we now, oh, we can now set up a name. So I'm just going to name it Plate Amp. Okay. And there it is. We now have two devices in the Devices tab. We have the A30 Plus and we have the plate amp. So let's get the plate amp to play some music. I have it highlighted. So if I now go in and select some music from the network attached storage, let's play some of my usual license-free music. And there it is. I can change the volume in the app. or on the plate amp. And as you can see, the volume control gives you much finer increments than the app. Now, of course, it would be unfair to judge the plate amp just by what you hear right now, because obviously the sound quality very much depends on which speakers you put the plate amp into. But I would say this sounds quite good. I am happy. Another main feature of the Forstream app is the ability to combine multiple Arillic systems into a multi-room audio system. So I have the plate amp 
and set up just around the corner, I have the Arillic A30+. Plus. And I can combine the two by pushing the plus symbol. I can highlight the A30+, plus and combine them into a group. And if I now press play, it does take a short moment, but now they play in perfect sync. I can adjust the group volume. And I can adjust the volume of each system individually. And I can dissolve the group simply by removing the highlight. And there they are, both separated again. In the comments on my review of the Arillic A30 amplifier, a lot of people criticized that the system could only be controlled via Arillic's Forstream app. So let's try to get some music playing through these speakers completely without using the app. So let me switch over to the generic Samsung music player. And then I'm going to push the multifunction button to switch over into the Bluetooth mode. The LED is now flashing blue, indicating that it's waiting for a connection. So let's activate Bluetooth. And we have the plate amp down here. It has linked itself to the plate amp, so I can now press play on the phone. And there we go. There is the music. So, as you can see, the plate amp can also be used without the Forstream app. But, of course, this does not give you access to all of the advanced features and functions. So, that's it. The Arillic plate amp. An interesting product for a great DIY project. Turn any old speakers into a complete wireless music system. As I've already said, of course, the sound quality depends on what speakers you use, but I am happy with this result. Thank you for watching.